you can find the candy that's cheaper. You can find chips that are cheaper. The sodas are really cheap. Sometimes you look at a vegetable and say, okay, well, we can get two hamburgers over here for the same amount of price. Why is it that you can buy a double cheeseburger at McDonald's for 99 cents and you can't even get a head of broccoli for 99 cents? We've skewed our food system to the bad calories and, and, and it's not an accident. I mean, the, the reason that those calories are cheaper is because those are the ones we're heavily subsidizing. And this is directly tied to the kind of agriculture that we're practicing and the kind of farm policies we have. All those snack food calories are the ones that come from the commodity crops, from the wheat, from the corn, and from the soybeans. By making those calories really cheap, that's one of the reasons that the, the, the biggest predictor of obesity is income level. Imagine a world where the food you ate was secretly replaced with a factory-created artificial replica that looked, smelled, and tasted just like the original, sometimes even better. But most of this fake food, including the meat, was made of only one or two plant-based materials and a gang of weird chemicals. And if you ate enough of it, it would slowly kill you through a range of terrible diseases. Well, guess what, America? You currently live in such a bizarre world. The nearly complete industrialization and corporatization of our food system is one of America's darkest, deadliest, and best kept secrets. And the important new documentary, Food Inc., seeks to expose it by asking questions you'd think we already have the answers to. How is our food made? Who's making it? And what the hell are they putting in it? Food Inc. is mostly narrated by two of the food movement's most prominent voices. The first is Eric Schlosser, author of the best-selling 2001 book, Fast Food Nation, which exposed the myriad crimes the fast food industry commits on a daily basis against humans, animals, and the environment. The other is Michael Pollan, author of the best-selling 2006 book, The Omnivore's Dilemma, which traces the ingredients of four different meals to their sources and has become the modern foodie and locavore bible. Fast Food Nation and The Omnivore's Dilemma did a lot to change how we view food in America, and in many ways, Food Inc. is the movie version of those two books. The film examines the industrialization of food starting when the McDonald brothers, who started the McDonald's franchise, realized they could increase profits by bringing the factory assembly line to the food business, with its increased efficiency, uniformity, and reliance on cheap, unskilled labor. When a giant factory restaurant like McDonald's becomes one of America's biggest buyers of meat and produce, everything else starts turning into a factory to meet those needs, including America's farms, ranches, and slaughterhouses. Livestock no longer roam and peck on idyllic farms, but are crammed shoulder to shoulder in horrific factories, covered in their own crap while being stuffed with corn and antibiotics. After that, they'll be sent to one of only a handful of meat processors that handles practically all of America's meat, increasing the chances of contamination by bugs like E. coli and salmonella. Food Inc. attempts to address virtually every aspect of the modern food system, including the need for tougher food safety regulations, the treatment of workers in food processing plants, the pros and cons of large companies entering the organics market, corporations patenting the DNA of genetically modified crops, the effects of the fast food diet on the poor, and a lot more. Unfortunately, this means that several topics don't get nearly as much attention as they deserve. With a compact running time of just 93 minutes, Food Inc. sometimes doesn't give you as much information on a topic as you want, while giving you so much information on so many topics that it can be hard to take it all in. Then again, the target audience for Food Inc. seems to be people who know little or nothing about the modern food industry, so the film's chapters are more meant to be introductions, not in-depth analysis. So what can we do about the awful state of American food? Like an inconvenient truth, Food Inc. ends with a list of helpful suggestions, like shopping at farmer's markets, only buying produce that's in season, reading labels, cooking more, buying organic, and reminding us that we can effectively vote for the food system we want with every bite we eat. While those are important steps, it's going to take a hell of a lot more than that. We're dealing with the most powerful food industry in world history, run by a handful of giant corporations who not only buy off politicians in bunches, but have embedded themselves so deeply within our government that they can easily change, ignore, or overturn any law that threatens their profits. What we need is a government that puts eaters and their health first, not as an afterthought. And that means voting in elections, not at the dinner table. But before you solve a problem, you need to know how bad that problem is. And Food Inc. certainly won't leave you with any illusions about that. I'm Jonathan Kim, and this is a Rethink Review.